paint a paint a bit of a picture for the people who are watching who may not have watched the Oxford Union. Just kind of what what, what your upbringing was like in Luton. So, I my mum was Irish. Uh, Luton is a Luton is a um, an immigrant town, really. Yeah, white English or minority. Uh, my mum was one of eight come here as the Irish community. No blacks, no dogs, no Irish when they come to Luton. Yeah. Um, Luton's football scene has always been diverse, multicultural. So racist elements, say like West Ham or the Millwalls, they'd all, Luton was a big day out because half of Luton's football hooligans are black. Yeah. And that's, Luton's always been like that. So Luton's always been like that. And I always say, line all my friends up. Yeah. You love St. Lucian, um, Bulgarian, Italian, Jamaican. We're all the sons of immigrants. Yeah? And when it comes to multiculturalism, you had Angela Merkel, the David Cameron chose a day to come out and say multiculturalism has failed. And it was a day that we had about five or 10,000 coming to Luton for an EDL demo. Shit timing for him, yeah? Th thick, yeah? But I think he was, I think they were appeasing what was a growing menace probably for them on the streets, which was a mass movement of working class men who were hitting towns and cities in large numbers and screaming in anger about what was happening to their country and to their communities. Now, he said multiculturalism failed. Angela Merkel said multiculturalism failed. That is a weak, cowardice way of saying that Islam's failed. Because if you come to Luton, it hasn't failed, okay? It hasn't failed. The it, It's like, you come into, and I'll explain it from when I went to school. You had the Muslim playground and the non-Muslim playground. On the non-Muslim playground, it's not all whites. Huh? It's whites, blacks, Indians, Chinese, it's everyone. Huh? But the Muslims stick together like that. And I never knew, understood why. You go into school dinner, hey, school dinner table, I don't know what it's like when you went to school, you'd have everyone... You'd have everyone in, integrated and sitting yeah, together. Yeah, mix. Yeah, yeah, but not in the corner. You'd have 10 stables of Pakistanis. They don't mix. Yeah? That, we haven't done that as kids. It's like oil and water. We didn't do that. Yeah? And I never understood it until I started dissecting the Quran. And I'll challenge anyone to do this. Pick up the Quran. Yeah, someone sent me uh, a Muslim outreach, sent me it when I was first in jail, 2011. I was on 22 weeks on solitary confinement. Yeah. Someone in the prison, like a... No, no, Muslims from outside. You can send things in. Oh, like, right, okay. So they sent me in with a funny little letter saying, hey, Tommy, we thought we'd help you embrace Islam. <laughs> and um, and thank you guys, because I dissected your book. I had 22 weeks of nothing. So I just sat there and I opened it up and every reference it made, whether it to be to women, I've done different categories. Yeah? So take the reference, do not be friends with Christians or Jews. Yeah? And just reference every verse that says it. I had pages. And then it just clicked. I thought, Jesus, man. This Are you religious? No. This, but I thought, this is it. This is the reason. This is everything I've seen growing up. The Islamic ghetto, yeah? There ain't no black ghetto in Luton. There ain't, right? Whites and blacks are all comfortably integrated everywhere. How come there's this Islamic ghetto? And the Islamic ghetto and the non-integration, I'd say, comes from the Saudi money, from the Qatari money. It comes from the influence of Wahhabism. It comes from... So I had this deal when I was in jail with when I was younger, 20, when I was 21. And I was in jail with some lads from Biggleswade, which is a town. And they've got Muslim lads there in the towns, a few. Where's that based? Biggleswade. It's not far from Luton, yeah? Okay. But they're totally integrated. There's no mosque. Yeah? They're not all in one area. There's no mosque. There's no influence. They're just cultural Muslims. I said, yeah, that's very different to when you've got... For example, the Luton main imam, um, Qadir Basque. Luton's main Islamic centre, mosque. This is what frustrated me for years. I grew up, my, my mate was a Muslim lad. When we were younger, we were driving through the town. He said, that's the one, bruv, that one there. I said, what? He goes, that's the terrorists. Yeah? And it was Luton Islamic centre. So I knew that from within their, within their youth, yeah? They would say, that's the one, bruv. Trust me, they're the ones, yeah? Then I see, Lute, when we started the English Defence League, they set up a Luton in Harmony programme about how that town's in harmony, yeah? which it's not. Who did? The, the, the Muslims council. or the no, council? the council. And one of the lead seats on this on this Luton and Harmony programme was a gentleman called Qadir Basque, who's the imam from Luton Islamic Centre. So I knew from day dot, he's a wrong one, yeah? from my mates telling me. And then I thought, right, I, took, I, I investigated that mosque. I investigated everything about him. I found that they were... So the Stockholm bomber who blew himself up in Stockholm, he came come to Luton as an innocent Muslim, went to university. He was radicalised by al Radin, who are now a prescribed terrorist organisation. But they weren't until the English Defence League was formed. They were given free reign to recruit in this country. They were sending people out to fight for the Taliban, sending people to fight against our country. They were in the newspaper bragging about it. No one batted an eyelid. When the English Defence League formed, we challenged them. Yeah? They then got prescribed, okay, because of the tensions it was causing. But they were a terrorist organisation. So he he went out to Stockholm and blew himself up. But he came to Luton as an innocent Muslim from Sweden. He was radicalised, converted at the Islamic Centre, at the L Luton Islamic Centre. The Westminster Bridge attack, Khali Mas was it Khali Masood, that one? And um, he worked at that mosque. Yeah? Everything comes back to his mosque. Now, I was sitting, I left the English Defence League in 2015. I'm sat in a room like this in BBC, BBC's local radio uh, in Luton Town Centre. 
And I know no, Kadir was sat on, and someone rang me and said, Kadir, Kadir Bash is being interviewed about you leaving English Defence League. He's on BBC in Luton. So I went walking in. So I just walked in and they sat there and the bloke says, well, Tony Robinson does live in Luton. He's just walked in. I said, yeah, of course I walked in. Let me sit down and talk to you. Because yeah? I'm the extremist, remember? Everyone calls yeah. me the extremist, yeah? So I sat down and I said, um, Kadir, let me just ask you a couple of questions. Just, I just want to ask you a few questions. Yeah? I'll answer your questions, you answer mine. And he says, okay. I says, in your ideal society, what would the punishment be for homosexuals? And he just looks, and you can watch this video. He said, I said, would there be a punishment? He says, yes. I said, okay. Because you have to ask the right question in your ideal society. He goes, what he tried to get around was, he goes, no, there'll be no punishment in Britain. You know, there's no punishment in Britain. This is British. I said, no, no, I don't want to know about Britain. I want to know about your ideal society. What you, in your ideal society, would be. Yeah. Yes, homosexuals will be executed. Oh, but you're head of Luton in Harmony. <laughs> How can you have Harmony when you're killed a gays, bruv? How can you have Harmony? Um... I'm the extremist, yeah, because I don't want people wearing a niqab, apparently. That makes me a massive extremist. But you're part of Luton in Harmony. You're a nice, moderate voice. And you want to kill gay people? And, you know, from, from this interview, um, from this interview, Ofsted raided the school because he had a school as part of his mosque. It was all over the news, yeah? Ofsted raided the, the school. They found books in the school library telling them to stone women, telling them to cut hands and feet off. They had, in their books, in the kids' books, yeah? The school was shut down. And I'd battled for years, and I'm sitting there like... And it was... So this happened, and then I was challenging the council all the time, saying, how are you sitting around a table with this man? Yeah, he's a Nazi. Is he a, then the Nazi's the millennium, yeah? He is a jihadist. Yeah? And he's, you've got a seat at the table. And whilst you're all sitting at the table, we're out, we're out there, all the working class. And, and Luton, Luton Council asked me for a meeting. This is when we hit off the English Defence League. I went for the meeting. They set up cameras like this. They had about 10 of them. And there was a baroness, a black baroness. They, um, and they said, we want to sit and ask you questions. Yeah? So tell us what your problem is. Because they knew we were resonating with people. I said, okay, I'll tell you the problem. Yeah. Uh, Farley Hill is the most run down, is one of the most deprived estates in this in country. Luton. In Luton, yeah? yeah. One of the most deprived estates. It's a white, white estate, really, yeah? A white council estate. I said, the park is from 1960. Yeah? Well, trot down the road to the Islamic community, you've got a 350,000 pound state of the art park. You've got a re you're a regeneration area, so your kids don't have to go to play, play, play football, play tennis, or do anything, yeah? We have got to play a five reach. Yeah? You have neglected us. You've forgot us. You've abused us. I said, and, the, and I said, now I'm going to go through and ask you a couple of questions. Audio, where do you live? Yeah, St. Albans. Where do you live? Hitchin. These are all nice areas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where do you live? Yeah. And I got to Mohammed at the end, who's in there. I said, you live in Berry Park, don't you? He said, yeah. I said, you represent your community. None of you lot even know who we are. You don't even know what we're, like, what we're about. You're not from where we're from. You're not brought up where we're brought up. You don't get what we're talking about. You haven't seen the problems we see. So, and the problems we see are the problems of Islamic immigration and, how, and integration. And Luton went from when I was born in 1982 to one mosque. We've now got over 40. The culture change. You said 30 on the Oxford. You yeah, said that was Oxford. That was 2015. So you're saying there's been another 10 yeah. since then. Yeah, and, and, then, and, and, and at what point... Look, that's not bad. You know, it's, no, it's it, is, it is a bad thing because what, what mosques are promoting... What mosques are promoting, and this is just the conversation, it's like, is it a bad thing? Was Muhammad a good guy? Was he a good guy? And this is the, and I speak to Muslims and say, look, Muhammad beheaded 600 people in one day. Is he a good guy? Yeah. He married a six-year-old and he shagged her when she was nine. Is he a good guy? He tortured a man and set fire to his stomach and took his gold off him, a bloke called Kanana. This is not a talk according to Tommy Robinson. This is according to all Islamic scripture. Is he a good guy? Yeah. Is he the right guy to, for us to have four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty 10, 20 million people revering as a good guy? No, he's not. He's not. And that is an open discussion that we Same should... in the Bible, though. And see... No, it's not. Jesus didn't behead anyone. He didn't kill anyone. He didn't rape anyone. 